Greetings, galactic dragons of the new Adonai El Shaddai, riding on the wings of the sacred dove, flying into the solar rays of the peace codes of the new freedom earth, waking up, rising up, another surreal day, walking in between the worlds, gate gate, para gate, Parasam Gote Bodhisvaha. This shore and the other shore unite in the middle. We walk the middle path, the path with heart. Many synchronicities today. We had this event of the SpaceX Tesla energy with the Venusian energy, the dragon. They kept calling it the dragon being sent into space. This is synchronistic with the ascension, the dragons rising up, which are the guides, the ascended masters, the ancestors of all lineages, with the assistance, with the energy of the thunder beings of the west, the sky nation, and the star nations, here for humanity and all sentient beings, for this great awakening, this great ascension. Also, this ship was sent to space, at 322 and today is 30 20, 20 which is a 322 322 is 7 so that's a 77 a 14 and a 5 energy we also had 144 codes and the 444 energy throughout the day today the schumann resonance had a spike of 31 hertz which is also a 4 divine 44 activations we had the most recent earthquake in the last 24 hours this was 23 minutes ago from 9 30 p.m eastern time it was a 4-4 magnitude and a seven kilometer depth in california the west coast this is the west at the end of these transmissions today i'm going to tell you a story about one of the many reasons the masters of the east came to the west to transmit their knowledge their truth their energy to the western mind the rising sun of the east came to the west now the north comes to the south this was the union of the yin the yang the rising sun the setting sun meeting in the middle and now the eagle fly with the condor the bald eagle of the north always symbolize freedom and the condor of the south is with the love codes of the divine feminine goddess energy that is rising up to meet the eagle at the highest heights closest to the sun and the heavens above we'll finish the story at the end we had multiple earthquakes 240 earthquakes m 1.5 or greater and some of the most significant were in the ring of fire totally lit up new zealand also had a 4-4 57 kilometer depth in foxton new zealand Russia had a 4-5, the whole ring of fire lit up, all the portals are open, rising up, waking up. Another significant was in the heart of Lemuria, in Pahala, Hawaii, 3.0, and then in the heart of the Atlantean energy, in the Atlantic Ocean. Earlier today, we say that in the northern mid-Atlantic ridge, a 4-6, which was at 10 kilometers depth so that was a 10 10 energy 10 10 portal so with these atlantean and lemurian energies rising up this is synchronistic with the eagle and the condor you can think of the lemurian as the condor and the atlantean as the eagle or the rising sun of the east the eastern philosophies cultures with the west the setting sun the yin energy We'll start today's transmission from Divine Sister Lisa Solbird. A crack in time, reset time. When time stood still at zero point for all and for Gaia, for a new reset beginning, shifting to new timelines, dimensions, new us. What we have been feeling has been possibly recorded by the Schumann Resonance Frequency readings, the Black Stripe a couple days ago, and confirmed by our beloved galactic family magic 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 these are the sacred moments from akatu pleading collective by kabamur tegeta friends of planet earth we greet you in the highest honor 
As the energies ramp up further, you will understand life is changing as never before. The expanded state of awareness is experienced in the moment and surrenders in the moment. The higher understandings and heightened perceptions of the expanded self become integrated into one's conscious awareness, and one is able to make the shift that enables one to transcend the limitations that bind one to an earthbound existence. One is able to vibrate at a higher state of being while retaining physical form. Indeed, this is magnificent. This is what you refer to as ascension. In the state of being, your soul will be the complete navigator as your body instantly shifts into the origin of creation. In perfection you are created and in magnificence you will remain. This has always been the sacred plan for humanity, to become, to explore and expand, then return with experience and depth and a sense of unity with all of creation. This is your moment and all will unfold as it should. Look to the light of your Creator to guide you. As your friends from higher realms remain with you, indeed, these are sacred moments. Enjoy and love one another. And ik maie, I love you so. And these are from DisclosureNews.it. And so it is. Pleiades 1 message. Akashic readings expand. New cycles open up. Specific traumas are cured. Internal reorganizations lead to leap. Mirroring continues as central luminosity arrives. Pairings with the past bring opportunities. Cracks in time are purposely made. Internal collections generate external pressures. Viral discontinuations are evident. Artificials are exposed. Ancient clones are evidence to Terrans. Attention. The Tsigan line. Support for projector of illumination started 90% non-regressive. Terrans rearrange themselves for the leap. Galactic zone arrives temporarily. End of transmission. And this was all encoded for consciousness that was meant to receive these activations and codes. And today from Divine Sister Judith Kusel, all is in a state of transition now. A deep flux and flow is all is being rearranged and reinvented. I am most certainly experiencing this profoundly today as I quietly sat and thanked the old life for serving me as I welcome in a new life and new beginnings. We are going through such huge shifts that we need to release the old life and the old way of living with love. As we shift, we will experience moments of fragility, fragileness, we are like newborn babies in a totally higher dimensional form yet come fully equipped for the new life. Let us now surrender to divine as we allow ourselves to be stretched and grow into the new. From JudithKusil.com and from Divine Bro star Daniel Scranton, How to Connect with the 9D Arcturian Council from the 9D Arcturians. Greetings, we are the Arcturian Council. We are pleased to connect with all of you. We have established so many beautiful connections with those of you who have been receiving these transmissions and have reached out to us. We are very pleased with the way that you receive our transmissions and our energy and vibration. We have been noticing that those of you who seek direct communication with us are doing so from a place of genuine curiosity, and that matters. That makes a difference when you are seeking to connect with any higher dimensional beings. We are curious about you and how you handle the challenges of your lives. And so, if you get curious about those of us who exist in the higher dimensional planes, you will be more likely to be a match to our energy, and that will make the connection stronger for you. Now, this way of connecting to higher dimensional beings also works because you will feel for our vibration rather than just thinking the thoughts and speaking out loud and hoping that someone somewhere is listening. You really do want to feel for the essence of the beings you seek connections with, and therefore, when you receive these transmissions, it is always a good idea to feel for the vibration that is embedded within them, rather than just analyzing the words, concepts, and ideas, hoping to give your mind an advantage. 
we know that those of you who are truly awakened understand the importance of recognizing a vibration. Being able to recognize us by our vibration is truly a gift. It's a skill that you can hone and that skill will be useful to you when you are channeling higher dimensional beings. It will also be a useful tool for you when you are in a physical contact with extraterrestrial beings. You will need to feel them out to determine what their agenda really is. When you listen to a human being on your world giving a speech, you can practice this skill. You can use your ability to discern what that person's vibration really is and whether it matches the words they are speaking. Most of all, you want to use discernment in determining whether someone or something is coming from their ego and mind or whether it's coming from your heart and intuition. And when you have that skill, you have everything that you need. We are the Arcturian Council, and we have enjoyed connecting with you. And from Divine Sister Aluna Ash, there is an increase in solar cosmic activity and signs of the new solar cycle. A new solar cycle represents new consciousness, new ideas, new insights, DNA activations, the new beginning of a new world at a collective level. There will be more of an increase in solar cosmic activity in coming weeks. Although full moon portals that open on a gap day galactic activation portal and full moons in general can bring in solar cosmic activity depending on the cycle pattern lineup, but new moons versus full moon tend to bring in a more powerful force when it comes to solar cosmic energy. Eclipses do as well depending on the cycle pattern lineup, but again more so with new moon solar eclipses versus full moon lunar eclipses. New moon portals about three days prior to a new moon and new moons tend to help rotate sunspots and release solar cosmic forces towards earth's more powerfully than full moon the new full moon solar eclipse on june 21st is lining up perfectly on the 13th day of a 13-day cycle related to solar cycles while also on a day that corresponds to the sun it should be a very powerful energy it's an important time to practice mindfulness, being present and aware. June 8th is a 13th day, just a few days after the full moon lunar eclipse, an opening of gateway to the planetary galactic activation. And June 21st, the day of the new moon solar eclipse activation, is another 13th day of a 13-day cycle that corresponds to the sun. So some bullet points for the solar activity. Uh, May 29th through May 31st, increase in solar activity, solar storm, 529 through 531, increased cosmic ray influx, June 1st, galactic activation portal day, gap, gap days are connected to solar activity, sunspots, cosmic rays, DNA activations, June 1st is the opening of the full moon lunar eclipse portal, more solar activity, increased cosmic ray influx, and stronger solar storms will be coming after the current storm portals and eclipses trigger activity the full moon lunar eclipse on june 5th stronger solar and cosmic activity will be coming activated by the new moon solar eclipse as the moon gets closer to the sun usually about three days prior crown heart chakra activity subconscious impressions surface increased dream activity change in sleep and eating patterns, increased synchronicity, DNA activations, downloads from superconscious mind, drink plenty of water, ground, sleep, eat intuitively, work through any emotions that surface. The twelfth moon cycle is a powerful one. The planetary galactic axis activation I have been mentioning for the last couple of years on my channel is finally here. This is an incredibly rare alignment and placement in relation to Giza, Pyramids, and Stonehenge, and the new moon solar eclipse taking place right after the solstice is activating the masculine, objective, and the feminine subjective spheres of consciousness, Vesica Pisces, directly on the planetary body, opening the flower of life. All that happens without is happening within. The collective will begin to synchronize more with planetary consciousness to then synchronize with solar consciousness, which is the gateway to galactic consciousness. 
This will be the time of full disclosure of other life forms and cosmic consciousness oneness. It is an integration of a hierarchy of consciousness that takes place within us. This integration of the inner hierarchy within causes changes to manifest on the material plane without. This is also a time of calling in your soul tribe, new people, connections, soulmates of all kinds, and divine counterparts. It is preparation for a soul group activation coming in August after Venus crosses the North Node and New Moon Solar Eclipse Planetary Galactic Activation Portal. Gap days are connected to DNA activations, solar cycles, sunspots, solar cosmic activity. There is usually an increase in energy, synchronicity, dreams, insights, downloads on gap days. Now is a good time to be mindful of the connections you would like to change, deepen, or manifest in all areas of life. It is a new turning point beginning after changes experienced over the last couple of years and the last year, giving many a new, beautiful, and powerful opportunity to heal, expand, and to find balance. The twelfth moon cycle is from today, May 30th, through June 29th, culmination of the last twelve months. Release, new turning points begin, honoring our heart, heart chakra activations, self-expression, Rise of Divine Feminine, Cooperation to Build Foundation, Increase in Incoming Cosmic Energy, The Full Moon Lunar Eclipse Portal Opens June 1st to 2nd, Full Moon Lunar Eclipse June 5th, Opening of Planetary Gateway, Planetary Galactic Gateway is June 5th, Planetary Galactic Axis Activation 620 to 621, Calling in soul tribes, soulmates, divine counterparts. Portal days, gap days, June 1st, 6th, 9th, 14th, 22nd, and 25th. So there's six total galactic activation portal days in June. This is all from Divine Sister Luna Ash. Now today from Galactic Destiny Readings from Christina Papa Giorgio, Divine Sister of the Light. Today is a very auspicious day. It begins what we call the Crystal Rabbit Moon, number 12, May 30th through June 26, 2020. On May 30th, which is Kin 62, White Planetary Wind Day, we commence a new moon cycle in the Dream Spell 13 moon calendar. The Crystal Rabbit Moon is the 12th moon of the year of the White Magnetic Wizard. So we are nearing completion of the magical year soon to enter the year of the blue lunar storm buckle up for that one folks the crystal moon has the rabbit as its totem and we know rabbits are very prolific at producing offspring so this indicates a very fertile time for birthing creative ideas and projects as well as creating any form of offspring this twelfth crystal moon also coincides with the whole month of june in the Gregorian calendar, which beautifully synchronizes with the new codes. June is the sixth month of the year, and the sixth is the frequency of heaven, Christ consciousness, and denotes harmony and romance. The figure six looks like a pregnant woman, and so it brings forth a very fertile and creative energy, particularly favoring families. As such, all these wonderful codes favor romance, courtship, marriage, and coupling. All great signs for those seeking to unite with their divine partners. As June is the sixth month in a 2020, equal 22, equal 4 year, we add the monthly energy. 6 plus 4 equals 10, equals 1, which denotes new beginnings as well as leadership, power, and authority. So June and the Crystal Rabbit 12 month are a very fertile period for launching and initiating new ideas, projects, and plans, and stepping up as a divine, sovereign leader. The crystalline tone seeks to connect with others through networking, cooperation, co-creating and forming new cooperative alliances, creating communities, while also strongly favored. The crystal energy is brilliant for gaining crystal clear clarity and guidance for your next steps forward. Communication and networking flows information from spirit in all realms flow 
freely accessible by all of the new crystal beings connected to Gaia's crystalline communication grid. What information will you be broadcasting through this grid? How can your skills and knowledge assist in the upliftment of humanity out of survival mode into happiness and bliss? Now is the time to lovingly connect with your kin and form cooperative alliances. The crystal energy will enhance our telepathic powers through Earth's diamond crystalline communication grid. We will have more clarity and the ability to see better joining the dots easier and uncovering the truth. This energy should also facilitate more souls awakening as they arise from their sleepy burrows. We may also journey deep down the rabbit hole, uncovering more hidden and previously buried secrets. Rabbits are very sensitive and highly intuitive animals who love to socialize with their family groups. They are team players and look after each other as they snuggle into their burrows, they play together, feed together, and sleep together. Rabbits also look out for each other, warning their kin of predators and danger. So this month, as we are all liberated from our lockdown, there will be great socialization and connection as we celebrate and embrace our fellow kin. Much love and affection will flow from these kindred reunions. The main themes during this twelfth month are cooperation, fertility, and connection. Our goal for this month is how can I dedicate myself to all that lives? In order to fulfill this aim, you will need to be aware of co-creating with other like-minded souls who are resonating with your purpose, focused on the collective planetary dream of creating peace, harmony, and abundance for all beings. The twelfth moon commences in the final days of the liberating month of May, on May 30th, and concludes after 28 days, Four weeks on June 26, 2020, with Kin 89, the red spectral moon. This crystal moon encompasses three wave spells the red skywalker, adventure and exploration, bringing heaven to earth, white world bridger, connection, communication, and networking, divinely perfect, and the blue storm, catalyzing energy through transformation to create a new all wonderfully in alignment with the themes of June and the crystal rabbit moon. We have six gap galactic activation portal days during this month on June 1st, 6, 9, 14, 22, and 25. So we are starting June with a bang, taking off with a yellow crystal seed, sowing the crystalline seeds to create our highest potential during this fertile month. The 6-6 six, six portal on the full moon, lunar eclipse, and Sagittarius. And the 22-6-22 portal dates are gap days too, so we have a double whammy fueling our accelerated progress. This month we only have one PV day that was indicated as sign 5 of the 13 clear signs on the tomb lid of Maya King, Pakal Votan. These are known as PV days and hold planetary significance. The PV day is on the 24th of June and is 9 Manic Blue Solar Hand Kin 87. June eclipse season. All this beautiful harmony and romantic energy will be rocked by the two eclipses during the month of June and a third solar eclipse on July 4th. So lots of powerful transformation is being catalyzed for these wonderful new beginnings. Eclipses form a reset and clear. So this aligns with the one new beginnings code. June 5th, 6th, full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. Teacher, pioneer, adventurer. June 21st, solstice, solar eclipse in Cancer, home, family. Last month, the spectral serpent in liberating five month of May focused on planetary liberation and breaking out of the box. This twelfth moon we are finally free to unite with our kin, co-create and rejoice in our celebratory reunions, and after the parties wane we begin to join forces and step up in our expanded roles as the planetary emissaries of light, anchoring peace, love, and harmony as the foundation for Nova Gaia and our new expanded loving communities. Divine blessings for heavenly reunions with your beloveds during our planetary reconciliation process in la kek alakin
Christina White Magnetic World Bridger, Ken 66. And from Calendar Truth, welcome to Moon Month 12 of Cooperation. Every year, May 30th marks the starting point of the 12th month of the 13-month, 28-day calendar, the Crystal Moon of Cooperation, May 30th through June 26th. June 20th, 2020, day 22 of this 12th moon will mark the solstice point of the year when the sun reaches its highest lowest point in the sky at noon, depending if you're on the northern or southern hemisphere, marking the longest and shortest days. The word solstice is derived from the Latin sol, sun, and sister to stand still because of the solstices, the sun's declination appears to stand still. Within the 13-month, 28-day calendar system, each of the 13 months moons is coded with a quality power and action for personal and planetary attunement by which we begin to synchronize our consciousness with the cycles and creative patterns in nature. Familiarize yourself with the name, power, and action for each month and you will connect at a deeper level with the flow and rhythm of the creative sync in the 1328 frequency. The twelfth moon is inviting us to tap into our individual and collective powers of cooperation as we crystallize our purpose and universalize all aspects of our lives that we feel inspired to dedicate to the future of humanity and to all life on earth. It is also worth noting that this crystal moon includes a penumbral lunar eclipse when the sun, earth, and moon appear imperfectly aligned and the earth blocks some of the sun's light from directly reaching the moon and on, and on 12.7 June 5th an annular solar eclipse where the moon appears to cover the sun's center on 12.12 12 through 23 June 20th through 21st and from the heart of Buddhism to be a kind person from the 17 Nalanda masters Chandrakirti perfectly vanquishing dense darkness. Here the first cause for perfect enlightenment, generosity is the most important. Giving his flesh with enthusiasm infers what is not seen. The Bodhisattva, firmly established in such mind, has become a holy being, ravishing and radiant with joy, which as the water crystal jewel perfectly vanquishes dense darkness. And from the Zolkin Times, Kin 62, White Planetary Wind, the number 10 is called planetary, and its key words are perfect, produce, and manifest. The 10th day is associated with the word perfect, so expect a perfect day with a score of 10 out of 10. How did the number 10 become associated with perfection? In all cultures, not just mine, the number 10 is the number we measure everything by simply because we have 10 fingers to count on. Can you count up to 10 ways in which you can enjoy today? Make a list and see what you can manifest. Today is white wind, which represents communication, breath, and spirit, naturally combined with the number and day. The result is a perfect day to communicate, send a message, sing a song, engage in public debate, voice your concerns, or have that talk you have been putting off. Remember, we are journeying through the wave spell of the Red Skywalker that invites us to be more adventurous. Can you muster the courage to say what you really want to? White wind days are also great for communicating with spirit, so expect unexpected messages from coincidences, dreams, or random encounters. And from Christina Papa Giorgio, White Planetary Wind, Kin 62, 30 May 2020, Communicating Love, 35, 2020, equal 3, 5, 4, equal 12, equal 3, 30, Retreat, Contemplation, 3, Holy Trinity, Joy, Communication, Creativity, 5, Freedom, Liberation, Transformation, 4, Form, Structure, Foundation, Earth, Angelic, Ken 62, equal 8, Infinity, Abundance, Source, Flow, a powerful day for manifesting through your divine heart. Today is the first day of the twelfth moon month of the crystal rabbit, heralding beautiful crystalline connections with our planetary kin and bringing in fertile new beginnings. 
to manifest our creative spark. Day 10 in the Red Walk Skywalker wave spell of awakening, exploration, and expansion. Today we manifest awakening through channeling the breath from our heart into the heart of Gaia, then up into our sun, then into the great central sun, galactic sun, and then into source. Layer upon layer of connection to spirit through our heart portal, raising our collective frequency and anchoring the golden solar Christo Sophia frequency that was birthed yesterday on the planet. Tone of creation, planetary tone 10 in the physical realm. Action produces, power perfects, essence manifestation. The tenth stage of the Red Skywalker wave spell is the perfection of all we imagine as possible and more. It is the harvest stage where we happily reap our manifest splendor. The forms we have been imagining begin to manifest into our reality and our lives begin to reflect the great dreams that we desire. Planetary energies enable us to build and manifest strong connections with Spirit and Mother Gaia today. We have the power to manifest and produce incredible prosperity, happiness, and joy, both in our hearts and the planetary heart of Nova Gaia, as we are all one heart. Use this power wisely for the highest good, with harm to none. Today is a very holy day in which the will of spirit overrides the will of man. Divine intention shall be realized through the divine communication that is flowing through us today. Spirit is seeking to produce heaven on earth, so as a divine conduit this is what you are desiring to perfect. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Today's question is how can I expand my heart through listening to spirit in order to manifest planetary transformation for the benefit of all. Divine blessings for following your heart whisperings on the path to manifesting personal and planetary liberation and abundance. In Lakek Alakin, Christina White, Magnetic World Bridger. So a few things before... I begin my story of the masters of the east come to teach the masters of the west and the eagle of the north fly with the condor of the south. Beloved beings of light, let us know in the comments below what you're experiencing, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, your visions, your dreams, and synchronicities. Whatever your heart desires, please share that with this amazing community of love workers and way showers showing the way within to the kingdom of heaven if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe click the subscribe button below and the little bell next to subscribe to get notifications on future uploads and as always in the description below is a link to the transcriptions of today's transmissions and we archive these on our website primedisclosure.com and if you'd like to support this channel and my work in Prime Disclosure, you can support us and make a pledge on Patreon. We're at patreon.com forward slash Prime Disclosure. I'd like to thank our patrons and thank you, Red Feather, for your pledge. I appreciate you, my friend, and appreciate you all for your support. And also, if you'd like to support our mission for the Healing Retreat Center in Ecuador, South America, we're using a CBD business to raise funds. You can join us at cbdpsoil.com if you'd like to learn more about this mission for the Healing Retreat Center Sustainable Community. You can learn more about this on primedisclosure.com. Click Dow de Ecuador at the top of the page. And if you've joined our team, you can connect with us on Facebook. Just search CBD Team Ecuador. That's E C U A D O R. And now. A couple's quick stories, and I will bid you all sweet dreams. Last night, I was <laughs> had very vivid dreams of my union with the Vine Goddess. As all of you know that follow this channel, these teachings that the Goddess is rising, the Divine Feminine is on the rise, to balance the fires of the world, to bring this world, to bring this realm into harmony. So rise up goddesses of the light as i transmitted yesterday to some on our team 
all the goddesses out there, divine feminine, know that the divine masculine has your backs. And although we may not be many, one of us equals 10,000 regular humans, or what some people call Norman. So shine on, you crazy diamonds, and rise up, speak out, use your voice. This year is the year of the metal rat. It is the year of the wind spirit. And metal in Chinese medicine and Taoist philosophy, metal are the lungs and the large intestines organs. The organs, the lungs, so this is the breath. We are seeing through the collective, it's very evident that we have not just a lung issue, but a breathing issue. That's why the, I teach in the, in the Taoist arts, in the Buddhist arts, that deep breathing, slow, deep breaths are longevity practices. Most humans we know only breathe about 20% of capacity, and we need higher levels of oxygen in the body for our sacred vessels to thrive. And also, this is connected to the heart chakra, uh, higher heart, the throat, and the crown. So the wind moving through in and out our lungs through our throat, and it's also the voice. So this is coming through the voice of the goddess needs to come out, need to speak from our heart, speak what we believe to be true, our true heart's delight, our true heart's desire. So the story of the East coming to the West, this major shift half happened around the end of World War II, especially through the great traumas and tragedies of this massive war. Now many things transpired because of this, and this is a very long story. But I'm going to try to keep this short so I don't drone on forever. But one of these things, these major events that happened, the bombing, the nuclear bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki created an energy, a signal that went through the space-time continuum, it effect, affected all realms, all timelines. And it wasn't the bomb itself because many bombs had been set off. It wasn't the energy, the frequency, but that they were used against the innocent people of Nagasaki and Hiroshima and the location of that Lemurian energy. And it was August 6th and 9th, 1945, which was around that, the Lion's Gate portal. And obviously the Lion's Gate, Leo the Lion, Cor Leon is the heart of the lion, the core, the center of the vessel, the crystalline core, just as it is the crystalline core, Pachamama, and the crystalline center, the crystalline core of the galaxy and of the universe, also synchronistic with the what we call the great central sun, Hu Nab Ku in Mayan. And many things transpired because of these events and these activations, this energy opening one of these great events it shifted one of the effects of these events shifted the kundalini of pachamama from the himalayan mountains in the east to the andes mountains in the west and this has been recognized by many lineages many shamans many sages masters of many spiritual arts and we knew that the east had to come and teach the West, the Western mind, because the East is the rising sun, it's the yang, the West, which is of the light, the, the West is the dark, the setting sun, nighttime, East, daytime. Then we have the North and the South, the eagle of the North needed to merge and connect and learn from the South, and this is all these ancient cultures of the Mayan, the Incan, the Toltecs, the Aztecs, these came to, to the north, and this was through the 60s and 70s with the shamanic teachings of the Toltecs, the Mayans, the Incans, and the Andes was also one of the major locations, centers, spiritual centers of the what we call the Great White Brotherhood, which that's a story for another day. So many of these masters of the Hindu, the Buddhist, the Taoist, these Eastern religions after World War II came to the West and these were a couple of the masters that I trained with when I was very young. 
I came into this realm 51073, which is a 51010 portal, the same day as Sri Yukteswar of the Kriya Yog, the Kriya Master that was the teacher of Paramahamsa Yogananda, who brought the teachings of Hinduism and Yoga, Kriya, especially through the Kriya lineage, to the West. And the West also is connected with the British and parts of the European culture that came to the West, we'll say to the Americas, specifically for this reference, North America. Because when we say Native Americans, I want to be very specific. And for those that many people think that Native American, we're, we're talking about only the tribes of, of, say, the United States and maybe Canada, North America. But it was Native American obviously meant the Americas, North and South America, which, of course, you know, the tribes such as the, the Hopi, the Navajo, Lakota Sioux, the Blackfoot, uh, you know, from the United States and in Canada, Ojibwe, all these, but it also included the Aztecs, the Mayan, the Incan, the Toltecs of South America. These were native South American. So also with the great tragedies that happened to the Native Americans through these European cultures and that from the, we say the white man, but it, it was many cultures that contributed to the great suffering that came to these lands. And the master saw that out of this great suffering was going to blo blossom and bloom this blooming of human consciousness. So these masters, a couple of them that I had trained with through the Hindu, Buddhist, and the Taoist lineages, the first Zen master came to me when I was 17 years old. And he was Sensei Koshinogoi, where I became an initiate of the Zen Shin Sangha through the Cleveland Buddhist Temple. Then I trained with Daito Roshi and the Zen Mountain Monastery and the Catskills. And then I trained with Edo Roshi and Kango, Kango Roshi from Chicago. Kango meaning diamond in Japanese. Then I trained with many other teachers in Qigong and shamanism and then Sifu which is very auspicious. Uh, his Sifu story, we, his name is Max Christensen, his Taoist name. He goes by many names. He's mastered many arts. His Taoist is Ching Feng Dao Shi, meaning pure wind man of the Tao or pure wind teacher of the Tao. And with this year, the wind, these teachings of the divine feminine are coming in. And his lineage he started, which is very w rare, and what's very auspicious, he's been recognized as a Tolku, which is T-U-L-K-U. Tolku is reincarnated Bodhisattva, like the Dalai Lama. And it's very rare, but Sifu was born in the West in Michigan, right around Lake Michigan, into a you know white person, Caucasian vessel, which is also very rare. And he mastered many arts, the Nyingma Buddhism, the Mao Shan Taoist, Mongolian shaman of the Blue Wolf Clan, Red Willow Society of the Navajo, brought all these teachings together to create his own lineage. And he's what we call Gold Dragon Body, which is another name for a returnable rainbow body. Guru Rinpoche was the most well-known, famous rainbow body master out of Tibet. And this is ancient alchemy converting led to gold symbolizing physical matter, the gross matter of, of physical th third dimensional energy into light body, you know, the original body, the, the luminous energy of our divine virtue, our bright virtue. When Sifu attained rainbow body and he returned to this realm, he realized too much fire in this world. So he started a lineage called Kunlun, from the most sacred mountain in China, and it is a water path of the divine feminine. The fires is the kundalini rising up the spine. The water path is the downward flow, going with the flow. You can swim upstream, fighting the current, or you can flow, let the current carry you to source. Both take you to the same place, but most people are already too burnt out, too much fire in the world, 
the stress, the anxiety, the anger, the fear, all these fuel and feed the fire. Krishnamurti would say the world is on fire and we are the world. This isn't just symbolic or metaphorically, knowing that what we experience externally is a mirror of what's going on internally, collectively. We have our individual experiences and our collective experiences. And just look around what's going on in the world and you'll get the drift. And with this great shift into the age of Aquarius, the golden age, we knew that it was time for the goddess to step into her roles, to rise up, to speak up, and to help heal the wounded warriors. So the masters came to the east to pass on the lineages and tra the traditions to the western mind. And now since 2012, the activation where we reached the ninth level of the Mayan sacred pyramid, there were nine levels, each symbolizing a leap of consciousness, quantum leap of consciousness through the evolution of the mind, of awareness, and it was a spiral. Each level was seven days, seven nights, which were 14 days, which symbolized a sequence of time, and, and each one, the whole next level would fit into the day of the level before of each evolution until we reached the highest level, the ninth, which was unity consciousness. And it opened the doorway to infinite potential and infinite possibility. And that's one of the reasons we say we're in unprecedented times. What we're in right now, this great awakening, this ascension, is the f a first of all timelines, all dimensions, which that's a whole nother story for another day. I want to keep this under an hour. So the masters of the East knew that it was part of their mission because it's also the symbolism of the West, the bald eagle symbolizing freedom and liberation, liberty, give me liberty or give me death. It's that great courage of give me freedom. I'd rather be free or dead rather than be a slave to anyone or anything, any system, especially any belief. These programmings of the matrix that keep people in ignorance, in delusion and separation are a type of plague of the mind. That is what many masters saw it was like the virus in the code of the matrix, which was the illusion that we are less than or separate in time, in the sine wave, in the separation programming, make it, making us think that source creator, God, the great mystery is a separate being. When all the masters say the kingdom of heaven, God, source, is within you, within your heart, within your mind, within your soul. It is that love, the bliss, the joy that is the queen's chamber, the resonating heart, center of the Merkaba field, the twin pyramids, the three-dimensional star of David, the double toroidal field that creates this physical form. It is connected it is the doorway through the still point the zero point that guides you home through the sacred through the sacred resonance through the void through the emptiness the zen koan born alone gone alone come alone and this concept of alone like when the buddha attained perfect enlightenment he said in the heavens and on the earth i alone am the world honored one and when the masters speak of this alone state it is not this separate suffering alone it meant i am the i am presence that is all one the zen master will say not to or not a thing it is not something and it is not nothing. It is beyond the two. It is beyond the duality, beyond the polarity. When the two become one and we transcend even the one, going through and through and through until we totally break through into our Buddha awareness, knowing one implies many and many implies one, and that's part of the manifestation. But beyond the manifestation, that which is unmanifest, we call the unborn, or the unborn mind of Buddha, which is pure awareness, 
which is your true self. It is what is listening to these words now. And this, these words coming to you now through this vessel, through this medium, through this channel, was encoded into your DNA as a simple reminder that you, the I am listening to this now, beyond the concepts, beyond the story, is Buddha consciousness. There's nothing to attain, nothing to gain, nothing to lose. We let go, let go, let go, and smile, 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 ground, 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 knowing that this is it. Here now, in this body, I am the way, the truth, and the life, the eternal light. Aho! Have a beautiful and blessed day, dream weaver of the light codes of Nova Gaia. I love you all. Namaste.